Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. Let me just share my screen here. Uh, one second while I get a little bit organized. Wonderful. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining here today. I'm so glad to connect with you here virtually. So my name is Pam Denny. I'm the Maximo Mobile Offering Manager. So our topic today is Maximo Anywhere. So let's jump right into the session. So the plan today is to talk about 20 minutes. We'll talk about mobile, the new Anywhere 764 release that we're so excited about. We'll talk about the roadmap. You may have gone to Dave Gazdia's earlier session. So I'll talk about that mobile roadmap in a little bit more detail. And then we'll talk about the IBM community, the community that is sponsoring this event today that we're so excited about. And maybe we'll have a chance to go into that community and we'll show you a few things and how we've got some of the Maximo data structured. And then we'll open it up to questions. So let's jump again right into this and start talking about why mobile. So this question, why mobile, really isn't a question anymore. It's a requirement. Mobility is a requirement for our Maximo users. So whether we need mobile to improve our work efficiencies, to improve our data quality, to improve asset availability, our entire maintenance workforce requires mobile. Our technicians, our inspectors, our supervisors, our inventory clerks, our asset managers, everyone needs mobile today. So in the past, we used to give our maintenance work technicians a stack of Maximo work orders, a stack of printed attachments. And we'd ask our technicians to go and perform their work for the day. And at the end of the day, write down on that piece of paper how many hours they spent on each job, what materials they used, which tools they used. Or maybe previously we gave our inventory clerks a clipboard with a list of items to pick for kits. And again, those days are gone. We need mobility in every single user's hands today. And mobility that is accurate, quickly, provides information quickly, excuse me, and is secure. But why specifically do we need mobile with Maximo Anywhere? Because again, we need to provide our users mobile solutions that are performance focused, secure, enterprise solutions built to meet our mobile needs today, and so importantly, our mobile needs tomorrow. And Maximo Anywhere is the best asset management solution for you. Maximo Anywhere provides a very extensive feature set, and just some of those features are shown here on the slide. Maximo Anywhere provides you a connected and disconnected application. Those applications span across inventory, asset, and work management. These applications are supported on iOS, Android, and Windows platform. You can download those from the Apple and Google Play stores, and to meet your needs, Anywhere applications are available on-prem or in SaaS environments. And you'll also see the whole host of other supported features and functionality driven by our clients' business needs. The ability, for example, to see attachments to a work order, to see and be able to take pictures to attach to a work order, utilize barcoding, RFID, three different map solutions, again, to meet your unique business needs. But the mobile world is extremely dynamic. And because of that, dynamics that we see continuously, Maximo Anywhere continues to evolve to meet changing business and technology needs. So we're so excited today to highlight the newest Maximo Anywhere release, Anywhere 764, 
which we released at the end of February of this year. Anywhere 764 focuses on three key things, single, simplified, and superior. When we talk about single, Anywhere offers a single license, platform, and team to meet your mobile needs. You no longer have to manage multiple platform requirements, multiple vendor modules, releases, and licenses. You'll have one single mobile solution. And so importantly, this mobile solution is built by the same team and supported by the same team that delivers the Maximo product to you. Anywhere 764 also provides simplified communication, configuration, and upgrade. As I'll show you as we move through the deck today, in Anywhere 764, the device directly communicates with Maximo. That direct communication improves communication, serviceability, usability. And for our clients that are on our earlier Anywhere releases of Anywhere 762 and Anywhere 763, your customizations and configurations will seamlessly move forward to the new Anywhere release. And finally, Anywhere 764 is superior. Superior in terms of its architecture, scaling, and features. Built on REST APIs, Anywhere's architecture is fault tolerant, efficiently, efficient, excuse me, and so importantly, built for growth. And again, that's a key that we want to stress with you over and over here again, is that we need a mobile solution today but also a mobile solution that will grow with you as you grow in your business and mobile needs. So Anywhere 764, single, simplified, superior, but let's drill down into this release and talk about it a little bit more. As I mentioned, Anywhere 764 delivers nine different applications focused on asset, work, and inventory management. Applications like work technician, work supervisor, inspector, service requester, asset manager, asset auditor, and then our inventory applications, cycle counts, issues and returns, transfers and receipts. But how do you actually utilize these applications in your environment? Well, the first thing that you, we tend to look at is how do I get these applications on the mobile device? Well, as I mentioned, the Anywhere apps are available on the Apple and Google Play Store. So anyone today can download those applications to a device, but to now get them to work, you need to connect them to your Maximo server, which has been configured for Maximo Anywhere. And to do that, on your login page, one time only, you will input the Maximo URL. And this is key because, again, your mobile device is communicating directly to Maximo. After you enter the Maximo URL, what the application is essentially going to do is it connects to Maximo. It'll go to the Maximo database. It'll take the app definition, which is predefined on the App Store, but the Maximo database holds those updates or configurations and customizations that you've made to the app. So it pulls that updated app definition and also any corresponding data. The data you need for your lookups, for example, what are your work statuses. It'll also bring, bring over the specific data that you configure. The data that you configure via your Maximo queries, so you deliver the subset of records to your users that they need, again, to perform those daily job tasks. But let's talk about this communication in more detail. When we drill down into this Anywhere architecture that I highlighted, I mentioned that Maximo over here on the far left-hand side is communicating with a mobile device. 
and look at this. It's a beautiful thing, a direct integration, a direct communication point between Maximo and the mobile device. The mobile device is getting the latest definition, the latest data from the Maximo database that I talked about. But also we are on top of Maximo overlaying the anywhere fields, the anywhere functionality, the anywhere application that we need to enable these mobile solutions for you. I mentioned previously that the Maximo Anywhere architecture is architected for future growth. And I wanna drill down into that and highlight for this a little bit more. So again, when we looked at this architecture over here, the Anywhere architecture is so dependent on the REST APIs, and we've done that for a number of reasons. So importantly, our REST APIs are stateless. The fault tolerant features prevent a user from losing connection, their connection, or unsaved data in the case of server crashes. Our REST APIs are efficient. They do not utilize an RMI layer. So again, by not utilizing that RMI layer, we will have improved resource utilization and we minimize network trafficking. And again, so importantly, the REST APIs are built for growth. If you sat in Dave Gazdia's earlier session, he talked about the Maximo application suite based on OpenShift and the utilization of containers. Our mobile solution is enabled for that type of architecture. So these three unique features make Maximo Anywhere superior in terms of its architecture built for your mobile use today and also tomorrow. One other question that we often get from our clients is how do I actually deploy an Anywhere architecture within my Maximo infrastructure? And this is where that whole concept of clustering comes into play in the separate JVMs and how do we maximize our use so we ensure optimal performance for our users. Well, many of you today may have Maximo environments where you have separate clusters, for example, your UI cluster, maybe a report cluster, cron or integration. Well, that same concept applies to mobile. You would set up a separate mobile cluster for your Anywhere users. The size and the depth of that cluster is gonna be very dependent on the number of Anywhere applications you utilize, how many your users you have, what is the actual data that is required. But again, think of this, it just is building on that same concept of that single simplified streamlined architecture. So I briefly highlighted the Anywhere 764 release that we're so excited about today. But I also want to highlight that we recently had a webinar with one of our clients who was deeply involved in the development of Anywhere 764, and that client was Core. Core is a Maximo client based out of Sweden. And in combination with their business partner, Travalo, they worked extensively with excuse me, extensively with us on the Maximo beta program. They worked with the initial release of Anywhere. They helped us to ensure that their customizations, their configurations moved seamlessly forward. So we worked with them, tested this all out. And you can view this recording where they talk about their experiences with 764, along with seeing some demonstrations of Anywhere 764 at this webinar. So great webinar if you're interested in checking out additional details. Also, if you're interested in more details, we have an Anywhere YouTube channel. Within the Anywhere YouTube channel, we have a number of videos that introduce you to the 764 release where we talk about the architecture, configuration capabilities, all those great features and functionality if you want to delve into more details. Again, another great resource if you're interested in learning more about the 764 release. But today we want to talk even more, right? As I mentioned, mobility continuously changing due to business needs, due to the market. 
And so Anywhere and our work centers have this continual need to evolve so we can keep up to date. So with that in mind, I want to highlight what Dave Gazdia introduced earlier today about our mobile solutions. So within Maximo today, we actually have a number of different mobile solutions. We have Maximo Every Place, which is a great mobile product. Maybe some of you use that today. It basically enables you to take our enterprise applications like work order tracking and enable them to display in a tablet or a phone. But as we've moved forward, we've introduced more of what we call role-based applications. Role-based applications where we're focused on a single role, a technician, an inspector, a supervisor, a planner, a business analyst. It's very different than traditional Legacy Maximo, which has one application like work order tracking, where you could have anywhere from 12 to 20 different roles accessing that from a technician, a supervisor, planner, everyone's accessing that app, but they use it different ways. So with these new role-based applications, it simplifies and streamlines that user experience. But as you look at our two mobile solutions here today with Anywhere and Work Centers, you'll notice a few things. First off the bat, they're very different looking. Anywhere has a very different user interface than our Maximo Work Centers. And behind the scenes, the technology is very different. So what we are working to evolve to is often what is called the modernization platform. And this modernization platform contains three key things. First off is a configuration tool. As we use in our legacy Maximo applications with App Designer, App Designer enables us to quickly configure our apps, hide fields, remove fields, we want that same capability, but more for our mobile applications. We also are working to evolve to a single user interface where Anywhere and our work centers look the same and also based on the same platform. However, while they will have these three things in common, they will always be different because Anywhere will always be our connected and disconnected application and our work centers will always be accessed via a browser. I often talk about this difference is imagine you're, you're using your phone. When you're using your phone, sometimes you want that app experience, that contained experience. But oftentimes, if you utilize your phone, maybe you need to access a browser. Maybe you need to open up Safari on your phone and look for something or access something. So those are the differences in how the user will access it. So if again, I always know that I'm always going to be connected or have that connected information, I can access my work center on a browser, but if I want that app experience, or if I know I'm going to be in a disconnected environment, that's when I would need anywhere. But to bring this convergence together, to have this single UI, single technology platform, single configuration tool for these two mobile products, it's going to take some time. So we've developed a phased approach. This phased approach has actually started already with our first Anywhere 764 release, which we call over here phase one. So in phase one, what we did was simplify Anywhere 764, we removed the middleware. Our Maximo work centers, the technology, the platform is staying the same in this initial phase. We've added features to the work centers as Dave has alluded to. But again, the big thing that we did in our first phase was simplify the Anywhere platform. Next is phase two. As we enter phase two, think that Anywhere and our work centers are essentially saying the same, but we're going to start to add more, add more features. Right now, we're calling these new features MAT, Maximo Application Technology. You may also have heard this, excuse me, you may also have heard this referred to as Carbon. With this new technology, our initial proposal is to add a application based on this new technology to anywhere. 
You'll still have the nine Anywhere apps today with that same set of features, but we'll start to add more applications based on this technology. As we move into phase three, you'll see even more of those MAT based applications or work centers coming into Anywhere. We expect them to be inspections, work technician, SR and supervisor, and I should clarify that the inspection is the perform inspection app, that form-based flow. And at the same time, we're gonna start supplementing what we have in our work centers. We'll take those same applications and bring them over into here. And then as we work through our continuous delivery model, we'll eventually move to one application, one UI platform that is configurable but again, Anywhere will always be our connected and disconnected application, and our work centers will be enabled via a browser access. We're super excited about this new focus, this, about this new focus on this new simplified platform as we move forward, and we hope you are as excited as we are. So the last point I wanna to highlight today before we open it up for questions is I wanna highlight the Maximo Anywhere community. So you may have recognized the Anywhere community or the Maximo community as previously the Middleware community. And basically what we have done is we've moved or migrated the majority of our content from Max DevWorks or DeveloperWorks community over here to this new site. It's a great, great site. It hosts information on the user groups like we have today. It hosts information on our blogs, a discussion forum, content, etc. So if we start to delve into the Maximo community, you'll find that there's a number of subgroups. Subgroups are those kind of focused areas of Maximo. So for example, we have an Anywhere community. Within the Anywhere community, again, you can see those discussions. Hey, I have a quick question on Anywhere 763. How do I do this? Or how do, is this available in Anywhere 764? Don't have to open up a support ticket. It's that meant to have those brief chats and conversations between our IBM development team, our clients, our business partners, to give you the information that you need to deploy these applications in the field. The library is you're going to find the repository of content. That's where you'll also find some videos, events, an event like today is posted, and then our members. You can see here we're almost up to 400 members within the Anywhere community. Also want to highlight that we do have an Anywhere YouTube channel. This has been requested by a number of our clients and business partners. Show me the features, show me the functionality, give me some best practice, hints and tips. So we've been working over the last, I would say probably two to three months, really trying to build up the content here, not making these videos long, two or three minutes, grab your attention, present specific feature or functionality. We'd love to hear from you if you like these videos, if you don't like the videos, if you'd like context pro provided in, in another format. So while I have you here today, let's just take a quick look over here at the asset community. So can you guys see my screen here? So um, I hope so. <laughs> so here we are in the IoT community. This is where all the information on Maximo is. But as you scroll down here, these are the subgroups that I was talking about. Integration and scripting, if you're interested in that, definitely become a member, subscribe so you get email updates every day or whatever time period you like about new blog postings, about new discussions that might you might be interested in. Here's our Maximo Core community. Here's Anywhere, Spatial, Scheduler, and EAM. Let me quickly highlight how we have this structured. And again, then we'd love to get your feedback to say, hey, I like it this way. I don't like it this way. Where do I get this information? So our group home, that's like the landing page. And it's key for you, again, to be joined as a member so you can participate and view all the information within the community. Our discussion, that's that location where you can 
ask questions, view questions. If you've got a lot of dialogues, great responses going here in that forum. Very, very popular. Within our library, our library is our repository. I'd highlight one of the tips and tricks of entering the library is these two icons that you'll see over here. I personally love a hierarchy view so I can open up each one of these components and see what information is available at each one of the folder levels. But if you wanted to see it in a straight kind of like row column format, you would access this other icon. So again, I, it's, it's definitely a user preference depending on what format you like to see. And as you scroll through here, again, you'll find a lot of information on videos and maps, great, great content. And again, let us know what other items you'd like to see. Our blogs are we where we can push out new information to you, whether it's our YouTube channel, where it's that core webinar I talked to you about. Here's some development setup tips and tricks. I always get tongue-tied when I say that. Uh, important end-of-service notices, etc. So really hope you guys can all come over, join the Anywhere community, join the other um, Maximo communities, get involved in the discussions um, so we can stay connected virtually. So with that, I'd like to stop sharing and I'll check in the chat and see if you guys have any questions here. Uh, let's see. I don't know how to do this. Oh my goodness. Um, oh wow, it looks like we got people from all over the world. That's great. So I hope you're all joining. Um, can you hide the message about sharing your screen? Oops, sorry about that. I missed that one. Is there a plan to replant revamp Maximo's app designer to make it more user friendly? Great question. Um, I would say right now the priority is on the application designer for our mobile products for anywhere and our work centers. So I would say right now that is the immediate focus. I can't say whether we'll update app designer within the next few years, but again, I would say the focus is initially right now on the mobile app designer. Uh, would be nice to display, um, is anywhere doing, or excuse me, is IBM doing any development towards 3D visors? Oh, Dave answered the question on the app designer. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> Thanks for answering that. Um, is IBM doing any development on, I don't really, um, on 3D visors. Rafael, I'm sorry, maybe we can talk afterwards. I'm not sure about that question. Uh, slight shiny new UX on um, the UX community. Targeting end of the year for the inspection app. A question came in, is it possible um, to have all mobile apps under one group? Dave answered that. That's something that we're looking at for sure. There's a question, is there any plan to add a chatting capability in Maximo Anywhere for improving collaboration? Excellent question. Um, I don't believe we've seen that on our RFEs. I should highlight RFE as a request for functional enhancement. That's where we try to get the list of features and functionality that people are requesting. I don't believe I've seen that, but that's something interesting that we could definitely um, look at. There's a question is um, from Paul, assuming you are using the App Store version of the app, how can you switch between production and test environments on the same device? So Paul, it depends on the device that you're using. If you're using an Android device, you can go into settings and change the URL. So the URL from the development environment or the test environment versus the production environment. So you could make that switch that way. Um, if you're on an Apple device, you would have to reinstall the device and put in the separate URL because I'm assuming it's a separate URL for the production versus the test or the dev environment. So again, dependent on the device, on Android, just go to settings. On Apple, it would be a new install. Uh, let's see. 
Hi, Pam. Are there any thoughts to change the name from anywhere? Oh, goodness, Niels, you don't like the name anywhere? Um, name changes in IBM are really, really difficult. Uh, I, 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 I would say at this time, we don't have any thoughts on changing that name. I'd love to hear more from you um, about why you don't like the name. Um, that's pretty interesting. Oh, you want to call it Maximo Mobile? Well, we actually, Niels, we had a product, Maximo Mobile, years ago. Um, so <clears throat> I, I, I can't really comment at this time, but um, yeah, I, I would say it's not on our immediate roadmap to change the name. Sorry about that. Will there be a switch option without logging between att attachment? So, Mohammed, I think this is a question that was was almost asked earlier. You know, having one application which you could navigate to the nine different apps or nine different features or functionality from. It's something that we are definitely looking at. Uh, I, I can't give you a, a timeline as to when that would be available, but that's definitely something we've looked at. And that's just such an interesting thing because as the mobile world has changed, as I mentioned, it continuously did. When we initially developed Anywhere, Everyone wanted separate applications. That was the thing. You know, I want a separate app for work technician. I want a separate app for physical counts. But as time has evolved, the shift has gone the other way. Now people want one app with the ability to access different features and functionality. So again, that's something that we're definitely looking at. There's a question here. How much effort is required to add a new field in Maximo Anywhere? Uh, another great question, and it's really dependent on what that field is. You know, I think everyone is very familiar with the Maximo database. It's huge, right? We have 1,700 plus objects in hundreds of hundreds, thousands of fields. If you're in work order technician application and you simply want to add a new field from work order, it's, it's very simple, right? It's on the parent object. It's already in that object structure. It's already defined. It's very, very simple. If you want to add a field that is not in the object structure, that is outside, and maybe it's at the grandchild level of work order, so maybe you think you're going from work order to asset to asset meters to X, Y, Z, it can be very, very complicated, again, because of the data structure of Maximo, of Maximo itself. So it's not a simple question to say how easy it is. It's really, we need to first to define what you're actually adding. Um, is there a plan? Is there a plan between Anywhere Apps and the Maximo Assist products, the AI and AR solutions? Yes, there is a plan for that. Probably wouldn't see anything like that until 2021 timeframe, but yes, that is a plan. There's a question that you mentioned, eventual ability to create work center applications. Yes, that's true. Would these work center applications be in, available in anywhere once the work centers are working in anywhere? So I'm actually gonna go back a minute and share my screen just to clarify something. Um, let me share that presentation again. So if I go back over here, so remember when we're talking I don't, I hope you guys can see this. Um, let me just double check. Share, share. One second. So when we talk again about work centers in anywhere, always remember that there'll be two different products. Right now, anywhere is going to be the application. Work center is the browser access. We're still working through the details of what that will look for look like in terms of source control, right? In terms of files, are they going to be the exact same, or is there just sim simply a, a flag or a feature that enables an, a work center to be an anywhere app? We think it's going to be a little bit more complicated than that, right? Because of the additional features and functionality we need to enable a work center in a connected and disconnected mode. Because of that, think of anywhere will always require a separate license and how that rolls out as we move forward within the application suite. So today, as we've talked about configuration, one of the things that we're still 
working through, we don't have the details decided at this point, is if you configure or if you add in a brand new work center, how do we enable that as an application? There's going to be some work centers that you probably will never want as an application. Think of Map Manager or think of an admin app, right? Those probably don't make sense to be an application. They probably will always only be a work center. There also might be some uh, inventory features or functionality that would only be available in a storeroom that has connected Wi-Fi. So it doesn't, it may not make sense to make it an application. <clears throat> so again, we're working through those type of questions to figure out what is the best solution, how to make it easy for everyone to configure and use and maintain that. Hope I answered your question, Lee. If not, please let me know. Um, is there a plan to add voice assist to Maximo anywhere? So um, there is a voice assist right now with inspections. If you guys haven't seen the video, it's phenomenal. Uh, Venetius has done this great video and I can send you a link afterwards, drop me an email or just Google it for Maximo inspections, hands-free. And it's this great where um, video again, where Venetius reads off the instructions or the the replies and the device uh, enables that so that is available today within the work centers and how we will add that to maximo anywhere as we move forward is something that we're looking at a uh, question on licensing anywhere anywhere yes is a licensed product um, it's an add-on product it's not available with maximo core um, and it can be used in either an off, uh, a limited use or concurrent use license. Um, is that, Daniel, if you have any more questions on that, let me know and we can chat afterwards and I can send you a link with more details. There's a question on any recommendations. Oh, Dave already answered that question. Oh, it's so hard to keep up with what you're answering, Dave. I'm so sorry. Um, there's a question from Alexandra on any recommendation for those of us who see the work centers at Maximo. Goodness, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding the question. One thing I wanted to highlight to people is the Maximo 76 and 761 preview site. And I, I mentioned this in the pr previous chat with Dave is it's a great, great resource. Someone was asking about what are the features and functionality with the inventory work centers. Well, go to Google, do a search on Maximo 761 preview site that will send you to a URL. And once you get to the preview site, you can log in directly to that inventory work center and see the features and functionality associated with that. Excellent, excellent resource because again, now you're able to actually try it yourself. So. Um, and, and Kushal, it, it, will there be a preview site for the app suite in Maximo 8.0? I mean, that's something that would potentially come in the future. That's just not available at th th this time. So there's a, uh, another question here. Um, is there any documentation on how to build and deploy anywhere applications or make minor UI screen changes? because all the entire existing docs are based on Anywhere 764, 763. Well, actually some of those still apply. Um, there's slight variations in the build commands. So I, I know that we have a really good course on the new IBM Skills Gateway, what used to be called IBM IoT, um, what did it used to be, IBM, uh, I'm losing track. But anyway, the place where we have our courses now is called the IBM Skills Gateway. There's a great course there on Anywhere 763 and customizing. The same process applies. It's simplified. Some of the commands are different. You would see those on the Anywhere um, Knowledge Center. But also, I'd like to highlight there's a great, great blog. So again, in that Anywhere IBM community, go to blogs. If you guys have known Shane Howard, he may have helped you before. He's one of our top-notch um, support engineers for Anywhere. And 
uh, Shane wrote an excellent blog on cloning an Anywhere app. You'll also see tips and tricks from Bradley Downey, who is one of our top knots at Anywhere Lab Services people, on tips and tricks for building and customizing Anywhere apps in 764. So check out the IBM community. There's some really good resources there. Uh, let's see. Um, there is another question here on linear assets for anywhere. Great question, Milan. Uh, Milan, right now, linear assets are not supported in anywhere. We actually have this request. Um, it's something that we are evaluating at this time. Let's see. Um, there's questions about workflow with Anywhere and workflow assignment approval application at Anywhere. I'm not sure what a, a workflow assignment approval application is Anywhere. And maybe we can just take a minute here and clarify the workflow capabilities that we do have within Anywhere in our mobile products today. So if something is in a workflow process, so for example, if the workflow process enables a work order to have a change status and then be pushed out to a user, that would just correspondingly happen with the mobile workflow, right? There's no specific action is required. The record is routed through the workflow process and follows the business logic. So it shows up on that mobile user's device to take action on. What isn't it available is for me to interact with that workflow process. So if a workflow process was assigned to me and I had to take a specific action, like route it here or route it there or approve it here or not approve it, those specific actions aren't available to me. But again, the business logic that processes a record through a workflow process, which is so important to our users, specifically our mobile users, that would automatically occur. Uh, great, you guys are asking some phenomenal questions here today. There's a, a question also from Sushant, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name, um, but he asked, or he asked for some insights on SSO configurations with Maximo 764 and the prereqs to enable it. So that is one of our most frequently asked questions, and I would ask that you stay tuned to the Anywhere community. I've seen a preview of a blog that is going to be coming to you real quickly that gives lots of tips and tricks for enabling that. So again, that should be available very, very soon, if not this week, next week, um, you know, it's Again, it's it's in draft format, ready to be pushed out to you with all those details. So, Susan, make sure you're a member of the Maximo community. Make sure you're subscribing to updates. So as soon as that information is posted, you can definitely take a take a look at that. It's being written by uh, Matesh. Matesh is our um, chief architect for Anywhere. I think many of you may know him. He's excellent, um, and we're making sure that we get you that information. Any other questions, you guys? Sorry if I've missed any as we've gone through the chat here. Um, we really appreciate your, your uh, you know, connecting here with you virtually. I wish there was like a, a way that after we we answered a question, we could do like a check mark or something. That would be pretty pretty neat or something. But um, so again, I I apologize if I've missed anything. If I've missed anything, just just drop me a note. Hey, so I see this uh, correspondence between uh, Sino and Craig about workflow. Hey, you know what a great way to communicate here virtually. You know, hop into the community too and share that information. Um, if you're also interested, there's a separate LinkedIn community where we're encouraging people to share information. And I think that's uh, one of the keys about uh, Maximo and its longevity. It's been around for over 30 plus years, right? And the reason it's been around for so long is you guys all 
communicate together, right? You help each other out. And so we would greatly, greatly um, appreciate any sharing of information that you can continue to do. So, yeah, excellent, Paul. We'll get that workflow discussion going over in that Anywhere community. That sounds great. Again, you guys have always been so excellent. I can't tell you the number of times I've heard about clients going to other Maximo client sites just so they can see how they've implemented Maximo, how they share best practices. So there's a question about the native barcode scanner. Um, so in the Zebra barcode scanner, so this is another really important uh, document or link that I would recommend for everybody. Again, if you just go to Google and Google Maximo 764 system requirements. Oh, wait a minute, I think I forgot something. Maximo Anywhere 764 system requirements. You'll find exactly what we support for barcode scanning, all the versions, whether it's integrated or not integrated. Yep. Uh, oh, Craig's posting a, a YouTube video, thanks. But again, um, Shafter, go to Google, Google Maximo Anywhere 764 System Requirements, navigate about halfway down, and you'll find all the requirements, what is supported for barcode scanning for anywhere, whether it's integrated or not. It's great. Thank you so much, everyone. Any other questions? Dave is still on the line here too. So if you have any Maxima questions at all, it's a great opportunity. Mohammed asked for a question. Uh, is there any plan to add a new application like material requests? Mohammed, we actually hear that one quite a bit, uh, especially if I'm a field technician and I need to get something ordered, a replacement tool, a replacement drill bit, whatever it might be. Um, so yes, that is something that we're actively looking at, the ability for someone to request materials. Craig is putting in a plug for timesheets. <laughs> um, sure, I'll drop my email in here. It's pretty simple. Denny at us.ibm.com. Again, if I can spell. Uh, please drop me an email and we'll try to respond as soon as we can. Again, uh, Dave, I believe, is still on the chat if anybody has any questions. Yay! <laughs> I know, Richard, we miss all being together, don't we? It's so hard, all these virtual meetings. Maybe the next time we can all be together. Oh, Andrew, one of my favorite questions. Any update to Cognos or BERT? Um, yeah, I think there's always an update, right? You know, analytics is so key to the Maximo portfolio, right? You know, we put all this great information in Maximo all the time. How do we analyze it? And I think you know that I'm a, a huge Cognos fan. I also hope, and I'd just like to reiterate, reiterate with everyone that you're all entitled to Cognos 11.0. 11011 with Maximo 761. If you haven't tried it, highly recommend it. Great, great product. It gives us for the very first time the ability to create dashboards, dynamic, beautiful dashboards for Cognos and Maximo. Um, in terms of an upgrade to later versions of Cognos, that's something that Dave and I are actively looking at, um, whether that might be this year or next year, we're still looking at that. I think the Cognos upgrade may potentially come before a BERT upgrade. You know, BERT is our, our embedded solution. It's our solid, you know, platform that we utilize to print our reports, to enable QBR reporting. But in terms of that front-end visual, really snazzy um, analytic reports, we're really relying right now on Cognos for that. There's a question here from Edmido on where can we consult the data model inspections on the Maximo data model? 
Um, and Mito, drop me an email. I actually had that um, question earlier, and Vinicius, who is the architect for that, um, he has that available, or I can send that to you. Um, so basically, the new set of tables that are enabled for inspections. Another tip, if you're interested and you have access, go to the Maximo, Maximo Core Integration Framework. And if you look up or search on MX API, if you do a search or a filter on MX API, you'll see all the object structures that are used for the work centers and look for the inspection one and you can see the inspection actually database tables. Um, there's a question on recommendations for you that you, the people that don't see work centers, go out to the preview site. I can't recommend that enough. The, the preview site is huge. Um, you know, go out there, give it a try try all the different features and functionality and then convince your management team to to <laughs> to start using work centers in maximo they're really great there's also a lot of great videos on the iot support channel on the work centers so you know you can visually see how they work so great great um, options there there's a question on Cognos. Is there any documentation, documentation on how to build a reporting database and not connect Maximo to the production database or a reporting database in sync with production? Um, definitely. Uh, there is a suite of Maximo Cognos YouTube channels, and there's a number of different ways that you can create a data source in Cognos. So whether it's to your production database, your Maximo database, whether you create integration object structures as Cognos data models, or whether you upload CSV and XLS files, there is a suite of videos there. Um, and essentially think that one of those options is in creating a data source. So when you create your data source, you'll just simply define the URL of your report database instead of your production database. So um, if, if you can't find that on uh, YouTube, let me know, and I'll, I'll definitely make sure I send you that. Oh, and it looks like Graham shared the ERD diagram. Thanks, Graham. Oh, Sharon's telling me um, that my walls <laughs> are like PSDI blue. That's so funny. <sighs> yeah, they are, Sharon. Somebody told me I needed some pictures or uh, something on the wall. It was too dull, so I apologize. I need a bookcase. Yeah, I need a bookcase. Everybody that's got a bookcase looks so smart, don't they? Oh, I don't, I don't have that. Sorry. Hey, Dave, there's a question. Um, any plan to include base incidents or problems back into Maximo? I hope Dave can answer that one, Andrew. And Anna, thank you. It looks good to me clean. See, I like that because that's less I have to clean. <laughs> yeah, we miss the good old PSDI times. Yep. So Andrew, I'm, I'm hoping Dave will respond to that question. Um, Oh, there you go. Excellent. Thanks, Dave. Any other questions or thoughts today? Oh, Anna is begging for configuration items, Dave. So Dave, I'll let you answer the question about CIs. I, I don't know that answer. Uh, Rami, about workflow in anywhere work centers. I think that's something that we're continuously looking at, right? You know, how we could potentially integrate that. But again, thinking of the user of the mobile device and what they actually need in workflow. I think that's just like really key requirement for us. 
So we'd love to hear more about your use cases, um, about what you specifically need, what those specifically requirements are. And also I'd encourage you to check out the conversation earlier and we had in the chat. I think someone, Craig, may have posted a YouTube video um, and I think a couple of people were gonna start a conversation in the Anywhere community about what that would look like. Oh, um, Dave, any plans for a new skin? Well, I'm letting Dave answer that one. Uh, the next question, are there any plans to mobilize uh, permit to work? Permit to work, again, is something that we're looking at um, that would come more from the industry solution. So I think once we start to move forward, and I can't highlight the importance of this configuration tool enough, you know, the ability for us to quickly create and clone new applications, that's gonna exponentially increase the amount of mobile solutions that you're able to create, that we're able to create, again, because now we have the single platform, single UI. So we're super excited about that as we move forward. Excellent. So Milan, there's your question on the new skin. Anybody else? <laughs> so much opinions on skins. Thanks, Andrew, good chatting with you. I'm not really sure how to end this. I don't know if anybody has any ideas. <laughs> Bring back Nutman? I don't know what, who Nutman is. Sorry, Scott, I know what that one, that might be an inside joke I must have missed. <laughs> oh, PSDI mascot, that's pretty funny. Um, I, don't, <laughs> I feel bad, you know, we're all working from home now and all my, uh, my, all my Maximo stuff is at my work office, so I don't even have a Maximo work cup with me. I don't know if anybody else does, but it makes me pretty sad. Um, Barbara, your question on linear support for anywhere, again, it's not available at this time. It's something that we're looking at. We don't have a commitment that we can make right now, but it is being highly uh, asked for and highly requested. So it definitely is something that we're looking at for the future. So there's one more question here. Any plan on an anywhere enhancement application, application enhancement, excuse me, like in transfers and receipt app ability to multi-select records for receipt transaction? Um, on that question, I think we're always looking at updates for features and functionality. Uh, this specific one, I'm not, I can't say for sure that it's it's being actively available. I'd have to go back to the list that we have of our RFEs. You know, everybody has so many RFE requests for mobile, we're continually evaluating them. So I can't commit it this time, but I can say that we actively review our RFEs. So um, that would be a great thing for us to look at. So Rami asks, if we've already mentioned this, what's the date of releasing the UI configuration tool for anywhere in the work centers? Um, Rami, I think that's something that it, we are so aggressively pursuing. Um, we hope to have it as soon available as soon as possible, whether that is later this year, early next year, we're still looking at those final delivery dates, but it is um, one of the highest priority things that we're working on right now. All right, thanks everyone. Looks like
this chat. So thank you, thank you. Um, great talking with you. Take care. When finished, click stop.